Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nelson. If you don't know me already, Ooh, getting a little bit windy out here. But um, yeah, welcome back to my channel, Fish Another Day. So uh, today, not really a fishing video, but uh, I am going to show you guys how I made this portable electric shower. So if you guys go fishing or if you go camping or if for any reason you find yourself wanting to have some kind of flowing water, um, for example, maybe you need to wash your car or you need to water your garden where your hose doesn't reach um, or maybe you need to rinse your gear after fishing or camping uh, or even just shower your dog somewhere. You probably have been looking for a solution similar to this. So with that being said, I'm going to break this video down into a couple sections. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you the parts and how to build the actual entire thing right here. Um, other than that, I'm going to also tell you about why I chose those parts over other options because if, if you go shopping for these parts, you're going to see little little differences between all the different parts here. Um, and then at the last end of the video, we're going to talk about any kind of modifications that I might recommend or I might actually do myself later down the road. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I'm not actually going to take this apart and kind of rebuild it for the sake of the video, mostly because these parts are pretty much like Legos. They only fit one particular way, like this 3 8 inch barb really only fits in a 3 8 inch uh, tube over here. So everything fits like a Lego, assuming you bought the correct size parts. So if you buy all the parts I have listed in the description, they all fit together. So pretty straightforward, uh, not going to take it apart just for that. So at the start of the circuit over here, we're, we're going to pump some water out. The reason I actually have this tube over here that's kind of just in the container, you can actually take a new container that you have. Um, maybe you have like, you're traveling with like three or four of these things. All you do is take this hose out, put it in another container, and then you're good to go. Um, and that's also why I have this hanging on just some paracord over here paracord carabiner or you could tie it up if you need to but this allows me to take this whole setup and stick it on a whole nother container so let's start with the actual water container itself so this one is a i guess it's it's a bpa free water container that's made by reliance although i got this from walmart and you can find it i'll have links in the description also for all the parts but um at walmart is where i got this and i got it on their website it's under um Ozark Trail, I believe, is the brand that they market it as, um, but it is Reliance uh, as it's branded on the container itself. Uh, this one is six gallons. It's BPA free, so you could put potable water in here. Uh, the only drawback is it's not clear, so you don't really know what your water level is um, as you're using more water. Next thing we have is the tubing. So the tubing is just vinyl tubing, nothing special. It doesn't have to be high pressure or anything on this end. Uh, I have about four feet of it here and definitely get a 3 8 inch inner diameter. And that goes straight over to the barbed end of the first adapter. This adapter comes with the actual diaphragm pump, which also comes with another adapter. These are both the same, and then it goes to just a red and black wire here. Uh, I'll talk more about this in a second, but you do definitely want to have the particular pump that has a half inch opening going to a 3 8 inch barb that they give to you for free or actually included in this particular um, one that I bought on Amazon. So again, 3 8 inch hose going to a 3 8 inch barb, going to a half inch going into the actual diaphragm pump. This is the outlet part. Again, that's half inch going down to a 3 8 inch barb. And then this is a high pressure piece of tubing. I bought 200 PSI vinyl um, reinforced tubing. and. This is hose clamped down. It's about a one foot section here. You don't need all that. And then hose clamped down to the first adapter that I have here. This is 3 8 inch barb going to a female end quarter inch. Uh, that's all brass. And then from there, we're going to the air hose. This is actually an air hose. This is not made for gardening or anything. It's actually made for pressurized air in workshops. Uh, why did I choose this? This is quarter inch inner diameter. Um, a lot of the garden hoses I saw were, I think it's a half inch inner diameter, half or three quarter, I can't remember. But that means if I have half inch or even bigger than that at a 20 foot section of hose here, 
a lot of my volume is actually lost to what I call dead space. Um, that's just volume of water going into the circuit here and it's actually not getting run out to you. So if you have a small container for some reason, a lot of that is lost to the circuit tree here. So quarter inch air hose, that's a, I think this is a either a 20 or 25 foot length. I'll have the description, uh, the length in the description of course. So both ends of this hose are, uh, they come fitted with a quarter inch uh, threads here. So that's the next adapter here. That's a quarter inch female going to, I believe this one is three quarters inch. It's either three quarters or half inch, but again, the link is in the description. So, uh, and that adapter goes straight to the garden nozzle. So from there, that's pretty much the end of it. And the garden nozzles that you kind of want are the ones with some kind of uh, trigger adjustable uh, flow. So whether it be this kind of style that I kind of prefer or something else. Going back to the pump, how do you get power to this whole thing? So like I mentioned earlier, it only had a red and black wire. And what I've done is actually splice a length of wire here. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about splicing in this video. Uh, you can find plenty of splicing, wire splicing videos on YouTube. Uh, but from there, you're just gonna have a long length of wire. And I got this actually off of some old electronics. Um, and the kind that you want is one that leads to a five millimeter barrel because the power source is going to be a battery pack that typically will have a 12 volt output with a five millimeter interface. So that just plugs right in there. And if you don't wanna use a battery, this particular battery comes with a cigarette lighter option, at which point I also bought a female coupler so that I can attach it straight to the pump itself. So that means I could power it off a battery or my car cigarette outlet. As for the battery itself, this one is rated at 44 watt hours, uh, has a couple different outputs, um, but it's up to 12 volts at 10 amps. This particular one, unfortunately, I don't have the actual link for it because it is pretty old, but this one is actually a car jumping kit. So it actually does allow you to have um, some connections to jump a car. Um, all right, so let me just show you very simply how this works in the first place. Got your power line, got your battery. We're gonna hook this up. Make sure my valve is closed over there. Hook it up to the output. And the pump started priming a little bit and I actually have the system primed already. Make sure you keep your battery uh, a little bit further away from your water source, which is why I have all this, all of this over here, all that length. That way you could put this uh, in a safer dry spot. But other than that, that's your nozzle. There you go. And like I mentioned earlier, you can power this off of your car as well. So let me show you that. All right, so let me show you guys how this works with the car. So all I have here, this end is the cigarette lighter port, five millimeter barrel. And then I have a coupler right here. This is both female ends, coupler, attach that to the cigarette lighter side, and then here is the pump side. Plug that in. Start your car. There you go. Perfect. So you could pretty much run this almost indefinitely and keep going for a long time. You can get a lot of showers off your car battery. So let's talk about the actual diaphragm pump for a second here. This particular one that I bought, it's actually a, uh, it's actually rated at 45 watts of output um, and it runs at, I think it's four and a half uh, liters per minute or 1.05 gallons per minute. Uh, I don't think you actually need that much, or at least I don't for my particular use as I'm usually using this to just, you know, shower when I'm uh, camping or if I just need to rinse off some fishing gear. Um, I could have downsized a little bit, maybe, you know, if you needed to wash the top of your car or something, maybe this is sufficient for you. Um, I think it's actually fine. The reason I might want to downsize is it doesn't last too long on my battery pack. Um, in real world use, my battery pack combined with this whole setup gives me about 30 minutes of runtime. So 
I would have preferred a actually slightly weaker with less um, battery draining pump. But other than that, uh, they're also, the other reason that I prefer a pump similar to this kind of style where it goes from a half inch input and outlet uh, or inlet and outlet going to uh, this adapter is because if you use a hose clamp and you just bought the ones that have a 3 8 inch barb outlet without the adapter, you can easily crush that plastic barb that comes right out of this pump. So that's the reason I don't want those. I want a large half inch outlet that then comes with an adapter to go from the half inch to the 3 8 inch barb. And so that way, if I hose clamp that piece of brass, it doesn't uh, crush itself. So that's why I prefer that. Uh, I mentioned why I wanted a quarter inch uh, air hose here, uh, but also I would like to, you know, have some you know, somewhat compact but still extendable length for the hose over here. And so that's actually why I chose a coiled um, design. You can often find a lot of ones that are just straight hoses um, and I just didn't want that. I actually like the coil. Uh, it just feels a little more compact and I could extend it if I needed to. Now coming over to the actual shower head part of it. This is not a shower head, it's actually a garden nozzle. Um, if you can actually find a garden nozzle that, or, or some kind of shower head that goes straight to quarter inch, that'd be great because then you won't also need this adapter here. But I couldn't find one, so hence I got the adapter. But the style that I have, of course, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to have the thumb, I guess it's a thumb flow controller. Um, but get the ones that have the different spray modes, uh, just because you don't know what you're going to use it for. There's often the ones that are cheaper. Uh, you save a couple dollars where it only has a single jet outlet. I like this just for the variety. It's only like, this one's I think $8 from Lowe's. And then the last modification um, I'd probably do is this particular tank is BPA free, which I do like for the um, potable water aspect. However, it, you know, if you're actually showering with it, you don't actually see the water level. So that's something you may want to change. Um, maybe you could find a clear BPA free bottle. Um, but I couldn't find one and this one's only 13 bucks. Um, there's a lot of other options that I saw online that's also made by Reliance, like the, I think it's called the water tainer or eco tainer or something like that. Um, but uh, this was the cheapest BPA free option that I found that also offered at least six gallons. Um, yeah, there's other options out there, but I did uh, end up with this one with the best set of compromises and features that I liked. Another thing about this tank, I noticed that when I do store it full of water, say for example, overnight, uh, the sides tend to bulge outward. Uh, is it really a concern? I don't really know, but um, it's an observation that I feel like I should probably let you guys know about. You know, if you're stacking them side by side with other things that'll keep the pressure into it, it won't bulge, but I had it freestanding and it did bulge after just overnight. So something to keep in mind. All right, so you guys saw how I built it, how it works. Um, only troubleshooting that you guys probably might run into is you might get some leaks around the different joints. Uh, only thing, uh, only word of advice I'd probably give you is wrench everything down tight. Make sure all your O-rings, um, which these things, these two adapters over here, there's O-rings in there. Make sure you don't lose those. Um, and also all the threaded parts, just put a little bit of vinyl tape on that, some vinyl plumber's tape. Um, Aside from that, uh, I actually have a question that I'd like to ask you guys. Uh, so the first couple times I took a shower with this, it's, it's not warm. You know, this is just water that's been sitting around and then, you know, you try to shower with it. It's, it's cold. It's definitely cold. Um, you know, I just want to find a way to take that bite off. So is there a way that you guys would recommend heating this water? You know, I thought about, you know, bringing a stove to heat up like, you know, maybe a liter of water to mix in there. Uh, but that's cumbersome, you know, it, are there more, I guess, streamlined approaches to heating this water? You know, maybe is there like a, uh, heater probe that I could just leave in here that runs off of a 12 volt or something, uh, that's submersible because I couldn't find one that is submersible, um, that, you know, kind of works for this application. So if there is a solution to make this water a little bit warmer for, um, showering purposes, Please leave it in the comment. Um, aside from that, I know some people have recommended to me already uh, using a solar water bag. 
So, which I do have, I have a five gallon water solar bag. You just leave it on top of your car, let it uh, soak up some sun, and then you could drain it into here. Um, again, not ideal, but it is an option. Uh, aside from that, hopefully you guys found this useful. Um, it took me a long time to come up with all the different parts to make sure they all were compatible with each other. Um, there's a lot of different tutorials on YouTube uh, to make something similar to this, but I couldn't find one that fits my exact needs. So hopefully this one works for you. Uh, aside from that, please check out my channel for uh, other DIY things that I've done, um, which are mostly fishing and kind of uh, outdoor, somewhat camping related. Uh, and also check out my fishing videos. This is the reason I'm actually making this, is for my fishing uh, outings. So if you guys liked it, please hit that thumbs up button and then please do leave any questions or comments down below. So I always read everything. I appreciate all the views I've had and all the support I've had so far on this channel. Um, I think I'm a little under 300 subscribers at the moment. So uh, please do subscribe. It means a lot to me. Other than that, uh, see you guys around next time. All right, catch you later.